Everyone ready? It was Pericles, an Athenian general, who once said, We do not say that a man who takes no interest in politics is a man who minds his own business. We say that he has no business here at all. It's for these thoughts of Pericles and others that I affirm today's resolution. Let's start with some definitions. First is the definition of democracy. Britannica defines democracy as a system of government in which power is vested in the people and exercised by them directly or through freely elected representatives. Next is the word ought. The Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines ought as a moral obligation or duty. Third is compulsory. Once again, we turn to Merriam-Webster's Dictionary, which defines compulsory as mandatory and enforced. Next is subject. Those are eligible citizens. And finally is voting. For this, we turn to the Collins Dictionary, which defines voting as the action or process of making a political choice. Next, as we turn to my value structure, we begin with my value in today's debate, and that value is democracy. For the purpose of today's debate, democracy can be defined as a system of government in which power is vested in the people and exercised by them directly or through freely elected representatives. I believe that this is the highest value in today's debate because the citizens of a country ought to hold the power that is ensured by voting in democratic free, and fair elections. Those that don't participate in voting do not express their opinion during the voting process. My value criterion for today's debate is voting. Voting can measure participation in elections. In democracies, particularly representative democracies, which are the main form of democracy today, elections are the one guaranteed event for citizen participation. While you can write a congressman or participate in a rally, only voting has a direct impact on changing the nation's laws, direction, and policies. Compulsory voting will ensure that more people participate in these all-important elections. It will also ensure that the full diversity of citizens' opinions will be registered. The only way we can ensure that government will be governed by the people is if we make voting a compulsory activity. With compulsory voting, we will have an increase in voter turnout, and with more people voting, we'll have more opinions represented. We now turn to my contention one. Democracy depends upon diverse opinions. Low voter turnout, which is common in representative democracies such as the United States, means that opinions of the entire citizenry are not properly expressed. In a presidential election, for example, where only 50% of the population votes, we don't know the opinion of half the country. This is unsatisfactory because living in a true democracy means to be governed by the people, and therefore the people's opinions, no matter how contrasting they might be. We are not truly a democracy if we are only being governed by 50% or slightly more than half, in this case 26%, of the 50% of the people who voted. Expressions of all opinions is key to democratic government, and the only way to achieve that is by increasing your voting totals through compulsory voting. Contention 2. Compulsory voting will lead to increased voting. According to a table of electoral participation in Latin America from the years 1978 to 2000, Mark Payne and Daniel Zayato for Harvard University Press state that in Chile from presidential election years 1989, 1993, and 1997, 92% of the population was registered to vote in their presidential election, with 80.3% of those registered voters participating and exercising their opinion in the elections. However, now Chile has abolished the compulsory voting laws. But you will see that according to the IFES election guide, Chile's voter turnout has had a sharp decline to 68.32%. That's close to 20% less opinions of the people registered who in a democracy are supposed to be governed by. 
being expressed in elections. How can we value a democracy if we cannot value the basics of representation of opinions? Finally, we turn to contention three. Compulsory voting will lead to increased representation. In a compulsory voting system, everyone would have to vote. And because of human nature, they would vote for what their interests are. In an optional voting system, such as the United States currently has, some groups are overrepresented and others are underrepresented. In the United States, for instance, older voters tend to be overrepresented because they vote in high percentages. This means the politicians will seek to earn their vote by directing policy towards those interests. Sometimes the interests of the elderly run contrary to the interests of young voters. This means that politicians uh, who in the U.S. are typically underrepresented due to the fact that they don't often vote in high numbers. By increasing the voter turnout of all Americans to 100%, those unrepresented groups will see more focus from the nation's politicians, thus ensuring that the goals of democracy are fulfilled. Thus, because democracy depends upon diverse opinions, and convulsory voting will lead to increased voting and therefore increased representation, it is clear that the only way to measure today's value of democracy is through voting and an affirmative ballot. Thank you.